Episode 16. This thing might be far more survivable than we've realized. We recently looked at signs that might foretell a solar disaster is coming and how much warning they might offer. Today, we look back into the past at relics of the survivors. I've long questioned the advice to seek underground shelter, thinking it invites a flood, ice field, mud, or lava to lock you in a grave below. I am unquestionably wrong. There are many ancient underground places that survive to this day. Some unquestionably built before at least the last disaster described by the ancients, and maybe many of them. In addition to my mistaken judgment on the integrity of such structures, I'll also admit to shock at how many still exist, thousands of them, and I cannot help but wonder if there may have been many more, forgotten or lost. This reality of adequate subterranean sanctuary makes sense in many cases, especially caves embedded in mountains high above sea level. Even in a flood situation, there could be air pockets that remain underground until the waters subside. In fact, many such places are known to exist. Inside the rock, the wind is no longer a problem. The impactors would need to be trained in on the roof of your layer to touch you. The cold is mitigated by the perpetual crust temperature, never going below freezing, and in places like Texas, often rising to 70 degrees. Sure, in many cases it's barely big enough for one person to crawl through. It might be dark, uncomfortable, damp, hard on your knees and elbows, but it might literally be a world better than what lies above. In the description box beneath this video, you will find many links to many resources where you can learn more about these ancient tunnels. The list was compiled by John McGovern, a man who has researched the catastrophe cycle since Velikovsky was around and who worked with Dr. Anthony Peratt. From Australia, to Brazil, to India, to Egypt, and across the earth, there is evidence of a retreat of the entire species to the underworld. Some of the most amazing are found in Europe, where Turkey is connected to the UK, Scotland to the Mediterranean, and the Eastern Bloc has literally thousands of miles twisting and turning in the deep. The most astounding part of this evidence is that some are dated to almost exactly 12,000 years ago, and that goes for all around the world. Not all of those systems would be ideal in a catastrophe, especially ones too close to sea level or too near to volcanoes. But the point is that this is not simple smuggling, and these tunnels predate the Iron Age when it was truly just stone that cut them, and they are still here after all this time. This was a massive effort to come in out of the sun, figuratively or perhaps literally. If they are 12,000 years old, Perhaps they weren't even built to survive the last catastrophe, but built afterwards out of fear. This raises the question of whether they would have survived the cataclysm, but that comes with the realization of just how many people must have survived to build them. Perhaps the concern of structural integrity is lessened in certain circumstances. Many of the places that could stand in for these underground cities are natural. The cave systems of the world are a remarkable thing. Some have survived numerous catastrophes and remain nearly pristine, and they provide an equivalent sanctuary to the tunnels. By the way, the same can be said for many of the mines around the world. There are literally tens of thousands of abandoned mines in elevated porphyry areas. Sure, some would be dangerously dilapidated and near to volcanic activity, but many would not be. And then, of course, we need to consider the more modern versions of the tunnel systems, like the ones built by the U.S. government. Most advanced nations have done considerable building underground, and with the current technology, there's really no telling the extent of the tunneling done anywhere. Something worth considering is that the governments like the U.S., who likely have considerably more now than they did in this decade-old map, which probably is even missing tons of more secret ones, have enough room and ability to potentially fit millions of people underground, far more than the 800,000 people portrayed in the movie Deep Impact. Imagine if they not only envision survival, but the continuity of the nation, if it's not imminent expansion thereafter. Does China see that future? Russia? Sitting at the top of the pyramid all by yourself doesn't do you any good. For all we know, you could drop a thousand feet of snow and mud on Cheyenne Mountain and they'd have lasers cut their way out in a day. Secretive, but nefarious? Secretive by necessity? You can speculate the negative, but we really just don't know. What we do know 
is that if they could secure what they greedily sought most, they may just want an army on their side afterwards, ones who can't believe their children are alive and have had food during the darkest days on our planet. Maybe they just want a bunch of farmers. Our Plasma Lab director, Billy Yelverton, brought up a good point on the phone this week, and I'll share it now. What if all those elites who are Christian actually do believe in the Bible? I say it knowing this is when some of the emotional and angry among you will begin typing away overblown comments, but with me not caring, because I know in my heart there is as good a chance of their wanting good karma as any other option you could envision, especially when they have the chance to be a hero in the eyes of their children. Daddy saved the world. Daddy saved all these people. If you 100% discount the power of this, you're probably not a parent, and your mistake is forgiven. People didn't carve stone on a whim. These tunnels were not a passing fancy, but seen as a necessity for life, or the extent of their existence simply would not be. The dirt and the rock. Guard against wind, cold, the falling sky, much dangerous radiation, wildfires, wildfire smoke due to the higher pressure below. I could go on. Optimally, you'd be able to look down on a verdant region you know has both plant and animal life clinging to it, but be doing so from your sanctuary high above, just in case. Some final thoughts. Food is a major issue underground, much larger than water. If you know to get to a cave, you might know enough to have water filtration, and the water that filters down through the rock is often safe as is, although less so nowadays due to agricultural runoff. Fire, sturdy tools, clothes, none provide the challenge that food does in the aftermath, especially underground. We will discuss some specifics on those and other items for specifically the Micronova Super Flare and or Pole Shift scenarios, but right now, food, that's the struggle has been for humans forever until recently. The collapse of civilization would put most humans on the starvation block. And now imagine you aren't above ground with whatever plants and animals have survived. Those below ground are already sparse. It seems logical that unless you find a magic machine underground, you have two basic options. Find a way to store or transport an incredible amount of food to such a location, or be crafty and lucky enough to get a safe position that you can exit and access those things. Needless to say, tunneling under a major city is not going to help you there. Something about this picture just says so much of what I think I would want. Wonder where it is. It must be noted that going beneath the ground offers no guarantee of safety, and more importantly, it is not necessarily needed. Remember, we all come from survivors that told stories or perhaps built the underground cities afterwards. This is more survivable than you realize. More on these after the event topics in the next episode. Be safe, everyone.